My name is Hannah Lee, and my big idea is that the four-day work week will change the way that we work. At Second Mile, we started experimenting with what would ultimately become a four-day work week. It started off slowly. Uh, my co-founder Jess and I read the book, It Doesn't Have to Be Crazy at Work. Amazing book, by the way. The premise of the book is overhauling and rethinking the way that we work. Uh, in the book, they mentioned a small thing that goes unnoticed when you enter the workforce, and it's you, you go from spending a good portion of your life revolving around seasons, so summer break, winter break, and then all of a sudden when you enter the workforce, very few professions or industries have any type of seasonality built into them. Every day, week, month, especially in startup culture, just kind of all bleeds together, and ultimately something like that can contribute to burnout. We really resonated with that message. And I was like, oh, that is fantastic. We wanted to find a way to incorporate seasonality into our work culture so our team could slow down a little. And for us, we chose summer. So Jess's background um, is in higher education and she mentioned, hey, maybe we experiment with half day Fridays during the summer. Uh, particularly for me at the time, we were right in the throes of building Second Mile uh, and the workload as owners was pretty intense. So even those extra couple hours for those half day Fridays really helped me shift gears and be more present during the weekend. I would find myself, even if I left at like 3 p.m. on a Friday, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I have so much extra time. This feels amazing. I don't know if anyone else experiences this or not, but I have a really hard time, like quote, coming down off of work. Especially in a traditional five-day work week model, I would leave work around 5 or 6 p.m. on a Friday and not stop thinking about work until maybe Saturday morning, midday Saturday. And then Sunday rolls around and I'm getting the Sunday scaries and I start thinking about work again. So that bought me maybe a solid 10, 12 hours tops where I'm not thinking about work if I was lucky. And there were also plenty of weeks out there where I'll admit, like I was working through the weekend too. So in hindsight, I realized I was totally burning out. Lack of sleep, mood swings, anxiety, difficulty focusing, you name it. So that's just not a sustainable work model out there. Um, and it wasn't working for me either. So I needed more separation between work and that downtime to recharge, relax, like that is where those best ideas come from um, for me. And studies show that you need that blank space uh, to really rest, recharge, refuel. So it was a perfect storm for me with a sports background. The best formula for getting ahead or outperforming in sports is you put in more practice, you put in more reps, you stay later, you stay longer. And I thought I could use that same strategy when it came to running a business. It didn't occur to me until we went through this process that in order to create a stable and sustainable business where employees and customers are thriving, we needed to shift from focusing on the quantity of the input to the quality of the output. The summer half day Fridays ignited this like, entire new way of thinking about the work week. After the success of experimenting with half day Fridays in the summer, of course, we had to push it a little farther. We got a little bolder and we thought, could we maybe take this thing all the way? Could we try an actual four day work week? So the following summer, we shifted to a 32 hour work week and we learned a lot I think the biggest thing that we learned was how to become more efficient, how to prioritize. Honestly, if it wasn't a hell yes, then it probably needed to be a no or at least a maybe not right now. And it definitely wasn't easy at first. We had to overhaul pretty much all of our processes and people aren't always comfortable at cha with change. But ultimately, the experiment worked and it was a change for the better. After our second experiment with Summer Fridays, we decided to just keep trialing out the four-day work week in 2021, and then we eventually fully committed to a four-day work week in 2022, which was terrifying, right? Like, it's really easy to say, we're experimenting with a four-day work week, but then eventually when you commit to it, you know, it, it's pretty scary. Um, anecdotally, we, like, we knew it was the right decision, but we had to have the data to back it up too. You can't make such a pivotal decision, like completely changing your entire business ethos and business model without some 
concrete data to inform that shift. So ultimately, we had a 12% increase in productivity and a 28% increase in revenue. Employees were happier and more engaged. Since we've implemented our four-day work week, it's been faster and easier for us to recruit. Our retention has improved. Our staff has the ability to engage more at home and pursue their passions outside of work, which ultimately affects their work performance as well. And team members with kids have the ability to reduce their childcare costs, which is a massive added bonus too. For us at Second Mile, we've seen pretty much all the exact same results that the massive four-day workweek global studies have shown as well. They've done a number of trials um, in the UK. They're rolling out trials in the US, which is super exciting. Uh, according to those studies, a four-day workweek improves employee satisfaction, reduces employee churn, increases revenue, positively impacts health and wellness activities, uh, contributes towards gender equality, reduces carbon e emissions, like the list could go on and on and on, but hopefully at this point, you kind of get where things are going. I'd imagine there are some folks listening who think the four-day work week isn't possible or it wouldn't work in our industry. And hey, I'm with you. Like It's not for everyone. There's a lot of hard work to lay the foundation for a four-day work week and sacrifices along the way. And at the end of the day, you will have a completely different company as a result. But I'm also wondering if those same people who thought it will never work and, you know, the four-day work week, it's not for us, they also might be the same ones who said they, they're never going to have remote employees, our business is not going to make it face to, without face-to-face -face time with customers, there's no way our gym or dining room or hotel could close and we could still keep our business up and running. We've experienced just how creative companies and customers can be as a result of the pandemic. The 40 work week doesn't have to be this prescriptive one size fits all Monday through Thursday, nine to five approach. There are so many companies out there that are really taking unique approaches and figuring out like at the end of the day, this is all about work flexibility. There are people out there that are staggering teams, staggering days, summer flex weeks, you name it. Like there's so many different options when it comes to actually exploring a 32 hour work week model. At the end of the day, it comes down to aligning people, platforms, and processes in a way that allows employees the autonomy for their best work and employers to shift to a more outcome-based performance culture. For any companies who are on the fence or intrigued, my suggestion is just try it, run a pilot, establish some baseline metrics, and then validate the data. You have to figure out what's critical and what isn't for your organization to succeed. I bet you'd be surprised if you talk to your employees about ways they could become more efficient with their work. What ideas do they have out there to streamline, automate, eliminate? Especially if they know you're considering a four-day work week test, you would be shocked at how many, let's say it with me now, big ideas they generate. There are so many things that we've learned throughout a four-day work week process. So for anyone out there considering it, uh, here are some things that I wish I would have known maybe going into it. Definitely less meetings. Find ways to communicate effectively asynchronously. And if meetings are critical, they need to be 30 minutes max with a preset agenda. I saw this thing on Instagram last night that said, if there's no agenda, I know attenda. And I think that's a fantastic motto to live by. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Uh, all right, so, and project management. You've got to get a solid project management software. And let's be clear, software does not equal system. So you've got to get a solid project management software and project management system and process in place. I also tell people reduce silos. So you have to make sure that all of your team's software and systems are connected, whether you're doing that through integrations or consolidation of your tech stack. It's critical to reduce redundancies and those inefficiencies along the way because you have less time to get a similar workload accomplished and therefore the work just has to get more effective and more efficient. Know what you are the absolute best at and lean into it. Switching to a four-day work week is a good time to potentially eliminate unnecessary or unprofitable products, service lines, you name it. 
And then last but certainly not least, set expectations with the team. The pace of the work is going to change. When you're at work, it's going to be a much more focused experience to gain that extra time back. And it's an exchange that people have to get on board with for the four day work week to work. Like the pace of work is faster and some people are not going to thrive in that environment, but you've got to set those expectations of, Hey, instead of a lot of short breaks or allowing for the task to fill the time, like I use the analogy of packing for a trip. When you have two weeks to pack for that trip, you will take two weeks if you're a psychopath Or you will do what the rest of us do and wait until the last minute and pack anyways. It's essentially the same model with a four-day work week. Instead of two weeks to pack, you might have two days to pack, and you'd be shocked that that suitcase and its contents are going to look the exact same. You basically are just allowing the task to fill the time um, with a 40-hour work week model. So telling people, hey, it's going to be more intense when you're at work, but you're dialed in, and then guess what? Instead of a lot of 30 minute, one hour breaks throughout the work week, you're getting a whole eight hour break for a day. And that's just a shift that people have to to sign up for and be on board with. But once they do, as the studies show, some pretty amazing things can happen along the way. <laughs>